Welcome everyone to another episode of Let's Make a Game. I thought a little bit about the series and I decided that every fifth episode we're going to launch an optimization video where I show you what improvements I've made based on your suggestions and feedback. During these episodes I will also provide links to all of the scripts we have so far and you will be able to download them and use them for yourself or you can even make improvements and repaste them for myself so that I can improve the game as much as possible code-wise. What we have so far is really great. We have our island generation, we have the correct tiles, we have a GUI which shows us what's going on, we have also the camera movement with all of the restrictions, we have a bunch of trees and we can relaunch the room over and over again just to see what kind of islands we're getting. That's all fine and good, but now it's time to have a look at the code a little bit more closely and make some optimizations. Okay, we're going to start our optimization run in the camera movement script. What I have already done here is make everything look nice and titled, but I have also made variables for various things we actually need in the code several times, or just things that make the code look less overviewish. And right down here I have used all of these variables, it's still the exact same code that we've produced together but some of the stuff is just exchanged using the variables so that I can easily look at it and also the code is now only 44 lines which is great. So this is actually a method we can use for various other scripts as well. Just make sure that at the beginning we initiate a bunch of local variables. I mean, we could even go as far as making a local variable for the global tile size so that we only have to write tile size instead of global tile size. I mean, that would save us a lot of time, wouldn't it? But nevertheless, what I want to achieve now is that we are deactivating all the objects which we currently cannot see in the camera view. So whenever an object goes outside of the view, we want to deactivate it so that the game performs better. In order to do that, we are just going to add some lines right here. And I'm going to call this deactivate region. The command we're going to use here is instance deactivate region of course and the way we're going to do this is we are going to define a region which we can see from the camera and everything that is outside of it we're going to deactivate it and keep the stuff that is inside of it maintained so down below we can see all the statements that are required for this starting with the left corner the left corner we need to calculate from the heart so minus the view width divided by 2 the same thing counts for the y corner, so view, h view divided by 2. Now we need to define the width and that of course is the view itself. So view w of 0 and the height view h view of 0. Now we need to say whether or not we want to deactivate the inside. So we're going to say false, we want to deactivate everything that is outside of it. And last but not least we want to say that well, we don't want to deactivate ourselves, so we're going to say true, and we can finish this statement. Now, testing this code as it is will result in a error, because we are constantly deactivating the outside region and we are not really activating anything anymore. So we have to make sure that we add yet another line. This time it's going to be an instance activate region. This one actually requires less arguments, but we're still just going to copy everything we have in here and we're going to paste it down below. Now we need to make sure to remove this false statement. We don't need that anymore and we need to close this off and finish the statement. So we are basically activating everything outside of this region and at the same time reactivating everything that we see. So let's actually test this out rather quickly, just generating a new world. And we're going to have a look around. You can actually see at the edges that we are activating the instances. What we could do in order to prevent that is to actually add another tile size to the activation so that we are activating tiles outside of the view and we will not have this weird effect. So maybe let's do this right away. Just to the instance activate region we are going to add a minus global dot tile size. We're going to do the same thing right here, global dot tile size. And right here we need to be careful because now we have shifted everything one tile size to the left. So we need to switch this to a plus two times global dot tile size. And the same thing right here, 
plus two times global dot tile size. So now everything one tile outside of the view will be activated as well and we will not have this weird effect. Very well, so we are done with the camera movement. Let's go into the world generation. So also for the world generation, I have created a whole bunch of variables, which were supposed to replace a whole lot of code down the lines, but for some reason it is not working. So I was actually using the variables in here rather than having all of this code because I was using all of these directions several times. For some reason that is not working, so if you have a look at it, maybe you find actually the solution to why that is. So I ended up replacing it again, but through proper formatting, titling and also just, you know, cleaning up a little bit, we now have a world generation which is below 150 lines and I'm pretty proud of that. But I am aware that this is far from optimized the best, so maybe you guys come up with better solutions and can let me know about them. But nevertheless, there are still improvements we can make. Okay guys, what you see right here is the tile generation in a room, which is double the size that we are used to. And of course, this is unbearably slow. We could create the whole room a lot faster if we did it in one frame instead of with this method. The reason for the slowness is of course because there are a lot of instances displayed and we kind of need to change that. We need to adapt. For that, we're going to use the same method as with the camera movement. We're going to deactivate tiles that we don't want to see and we're going to activate the ones that we need for the world generation. In order to do that we want to scroll down all the way to the world generation because this is the slow part. The island generation is actually not slow. So I think we can leave the island generation be for the time being. We're just gonna add some lines right here. So we're gonna call this again deactivate region. And in here we want to add the instance deactivate region command. And in here we want to start with the whole room. So we're gonna start as of the zero zero coordinate and we're gonna say room width and room height. We want to deactivate the whole region of course and we don't want to deactivate ourselves. Next up, we need to activate the region which we need to define whether or not to place down ocean tiles or sand tiles, which is basically the immediate surrounding. So let's say activate region. And here we're going to say this is from the X position, let's say minus three times global dot tile size. From the Y position, the same thing. The width is going to be six times global dot tile size. So it goes minus three into the left direction and plus three into the right direction. Also for the Y, six times global dot tile size. Last but not least, we want to activate the inside of this view, which we've just declared. That should be good. Now, this is not the only thing we need to do. We also need to make sure that once everything is finished in the finisher, that we reactivate the whole thing and let the camera script do the deactivation. So anywhere around here, we are going to instance activate region. It's just going to be the whole room. So room width, room height, true, and finish that off. And now we are ready to test the new generation in the large room. All right, guys, testing the game right now as it is results in something like this. The island generation as usual, but as you can see right here, we kind of have a brush just going through all of the stuff and it can do this rather quickly because only a few instances are active at a time and the generation still seems to be as we want it to be. So that's actually a good thing. It is maybe still not quite as fast as I would like it to be, but we are generating quite a large world with 10,000 tiles, so I think that is actually not too shabby. So I think these are pretty good results for our first optimization video, but I know you guys actually have ideas, you have a lot more experience sometimes, you know different coding languages and you might have different solutions and approaches to stuff that I might want to try out. So don't forget to have a look down in the description where you will find all the scripts necessary for this project. And hopefully we come up with great solutions in the future. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I'm gonna catch you the next time. Bye bye.